Hello, how are you? I hope you're good. We don't go the same places that we used to. I think come October everyone or some people come September, but everyone is starting to seek out some spookiness, some thrills, some uh, autumnal darkness. And I thought it would be fun to make a recommendation video, and instead of me recommending you things, I wanted fellow subscribers recommend each other things and I thought it would be really fun to get um, like a one recommendation that you think is the best best of the best um, and then share it with the rest of you so I've asked on Instagram to recommend some thrillers at that point I wasn't sure if I'm gonna make a video or not and I got so many replies so first of all thank you so much if you don't follow me it's sorry, book underscore roast on Instagram. I hang out there a lot. Recently I had a 90s music party, so if you, if that sounds good, join me. I asked you for some recommendations and I asked you to only recommend one and I wanted to select the ones that were recommended the most because I thought maybe, well obviously it could be just popularity but also maybe it was so good that a lot of people chose as their like favorite thriller. So I asked for thrillers and horror as a separate story so if you guys enjoy this let me know if you want me to do the same thing with the horror recommendations but some of the books were books that I have read and majority of them I think were the books that I did not so I went ahead and did a little bit of reading of the synopsis and looking at the ratings and whatnot I come with the list so I narrowed it down to 15 so it's nice and somewhat hopefully fast and precise for you guys I thought let's go through this together and see what you guys think would be a good read um most of these ended up on my TBR or on my wish list I will pop up a screenshot of a person who's recommended this, although I will say that majority of these have appeared way more than once in the replies, but I just took, I took one. I took one, sorry. <laughs> these are in no particular order, but um, let's go. The Silent Patient. This is by Alex... I'm going to try... It's currently at 4.09 stars over on Goodreads, which is a very good rating. Basically, the way I look at Goodreads ratings, anything under 3.5 to me is a very low rating, a uh, very low average. Um, 3.8 is like a standard. I, in my opinion, is probably like towards 3 to 4 stars. And then if anything that goes over 4 and has like a decent amount of reviews, to me, is very impressive. <laughs> so um, so that's impressive. I actually have read this one and I gave it four stars as well. I really enjoyed it. I will. So this is a story following Theo who is a criminal psychologist and he takes an interest into Alicia's case which is a woman that was really well off and really comfortable and just living a privileged and happy life or it so seemed until one day she out of seemingly nowhere she was her husband five times and then refuses to talk to anyone for years. Um, he actively seeks out this case wanting to crack open it and see why she's refusing to talk and if he can help her um, and uh, the solve is, uh, the case is also not solved so he he gets really kind of obsessed with the case and then goes ignoring anything depend anything to do with his own life and it becomes almost an obsession. Um, I will say that this I think is more fun for people like myself. I've read some thrillers, but my primary reading area is fantasy and sci-fi, so I think if you've read a lot of thrillers, this might be easy to predict. I did predict it, but I didn't predict it super early, so for me it was um, still very enjoyable, and there were, there were parts that were a bit like, eh, and it was questionable from like, actual psychology type point of view but I I just I, I thought it was fun I read it in one sitting I refused to go to bed until I finished this and in my books ha 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 <laughs> that's a win then we have Bird Box which is a story probably very well known now because of the Netflix adaptation that came out I think this year I'm not I'm not entirely certain I haven't watched it but um and I have not read this but it currently has 4.01 stars on Goodreads. From the summary, it sounds like this is a story about a world where everyone has to hide from something that's out there. Like someone knows that there's something out there and if you make eye contact, you're basically done. If you, if you get a glimpse of this something, then the person is driven to madness 
through violence. No one knows what it is and no one knows where it comes from. Fast forward a couple of years and amongst some of the survivors is Melanie, our main character, who also has two very young kids. Now she really wants to get a, a, get out of the space that she is now. Once her youngest, I think, turns four, um, she wants, she, she thinks that this is time, it is time now, and she ventures out to get out of the place that she is now, but she has to do this while they're all blindfolded. As they run, however, they feel the presence of something and they feel like someone is watching and following them. So that's creepy! I can definitely see this possibly being one of those books that you read and then you go to bed and if you read it before bed and then you turn the lights off and like everything is kind of dark but then there's some like residual light from the city outside the windows and then you have to go to the toilet but suddenly every shadow is a person trying to kill you. <laughs> that happened to me a lot after Hannibal's first two seasons with the deer elk situation. <laughs> Next up we have Battle Royale and this is what I've heard to be referred to as as the kind of original Hunger Games but much deadlier, much gorier, much more disturbing. This is written by Hoshun Takami and it follows a set of high school students that are um, living through these like really dystopian, this is mainly a dystopia but it's also a thriller, it's categorized as both so we're gonna count it. <laughs> They're taken by this really weird cruel government, again very like Hunger Game-esque, um, and they're taken into this stranded island and they are given weapons, they're provided weapons, but they are told that only one can survive and they have to murder each other. I have heard amazing things and I have found this in a used bookshop and I really, really do want to get to it. I've been wanting for years, but because it's quite a chunker, it's always like, keeps getting pushed and I really need to work on me not doing that. <laughs> this one has 4.15 stars and I think that is such a promising rating. Um, especially for something that has quite a lot of ratings as well. Personally, I think this could be a really good read for the season. The next book is actually one that got so many votes, um, probably, possibly the most, and that is No Exit by Taylor Adams. This is also a very high rating, it's 4.02 stars. I also have not read, and this seems to be a story about Derby, who is traveling to see her mother, to visit her mother. However, is met by a blizzard during her travels and has to make an exit into this like a remote highway stop and wait it out. Well she's uh, she she meets a couple of strangers there as well. I think it was like four four strangers but she doesn't think much of it and then goes away to like make a couple of <laughs> rounds around where she's walking to find some uh, phone service. She doesn't find ser phone service but what she does find is a young girl in the back of a van um, in an animal's cage. So that's nice and cheery and obviously she wants to try and um, help the girl but she also needs to find out who put her there I'm assuming and um, I reckon all hell breaks loose <laughs> from there and I'm assuming because she cannot call anyone and because she cannot get away from there must feel very high stakes throughout. So she now has to save herself and unmask the psychopath who is doing whatever he's doing here. Um, and next one is And Then There Were None and this is written by Agatha Christie. This is actually my current read. I am currently on page 86 and also despite the fact that I have a massive bookmark collection I am currently using a, a lens wipe as a bookmark. And then there were none as a story about um, eight, well actually ten strangers that get invited through like a very long forgotten acquaintance of theirs for the most part um, to the soldier island to which has been in the news recently about being this like luxurious place, basically like a paradise to escape and a very high-end resort. Uh, they are all transported there. However, once they get there, they receive this message, the recorded message, uh, listing everybody's names and what, what are they accused of. And it's usually them being accused by, uh, of being responsible for killing somebody. And obviously everyone denies it. <laughs> everyone kind of goes like in a circle denying their responsibility responsibility with anything to do with those accusations. For the most part, again, some do 
explain things, but um, I love that because then it feels like I'm getting not one mystery, but uh, pretty much 10 <laughs> to share the same story. It seems really intriguing to me to also discover what each of them are lying about because we get like brief discussion about each case. Also in each of their rooms is like a nursery rhyme and it's about uh, people dying off and then there were none. That's how the book is called. <laughs> they start dying off in accordance, like the way that they die off is according to this nursery rhyme. This is a pretty classic pick and it has 4.26 rating. So it's a very, very highly rated one. And I can attest that I am currently really enjoying it. Next up we have We Are All The Same In The Dark. This one doesn't have that many reviews. It has 1.5 thousand, so it's not a super popular book. Um, but the rating that it does have is a four. And it seems to be a story about two missing girls. However, one has gone missing a couple of years ago. The other one gets discovered by the brother who has been cleared by the judge of the disappearance of his sister. However, uh, by the public, he was basically judged as the culprit. Um, but he finds the another girl in the field while driving by, and she's also a missing girl. However, she's a completely different case. And um, a friend of the original missing girl then wants to in investigate and takes it very, like, very seriously because obviously she's lost a friend to a missing persons case and actually became a detective because of that case so and and by trying to solve this particular case she actually starts unwheeling and 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 revealing <laughs> revealing parts of the original case so it's all a bit like intertwined um i actually really find that i enjoy missing cases missing person cases in books um so i thought i'll include this here um in case we all want to check it out next up is sadie by courtney summers and it has a rating of 4.12 i personally really didn't enjoy this book however i know that i am a 100 percent and unpopular opinion on this one so i still wanted to include it because just because I didn't enjoy it doesn't mean that it wouldn't be an amazing read for you. This has a lot of triggers for sexual abuse, especially when it comes to children. I think it is about the disappearance of a younger sister. So the older sister goes into investigating that and she runs away. And um, the case gets picked up by this podcast. So half of the book is told into a, through like a podcast format and half of it is actually us following the character. I would highly recommend the audiobook actually because I remember the audiobook was really beautifully done especially considering that half of it is a podcast so it, it kind of comes naturally. I think I was disappointed by the ending and I don't want to say much more because I feel like it might be a bit spoilery but I do know that a lot of people have liked this. I just didn't particularly care for it personally but um I'm picky, so, <laughs> so it's fine. Then we got Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Hurton, and this one has 3.89 stars. I do have this, I also found this in a secondhand shop, but it's currently stacked in a different place and I just couldn't bother to find it. <laughs> but this has been on my radar for a while. And I am super excited to read it, but it does seem like a chunker again. So we have the same thing like with the Battle Royale. So it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. But this is basically a Groundhog Day. This is a day on a loop and if someone's stuck in a loop and they cannot get out of the loop until um, they solve the case of Evelyn Harcastle who gets murdered and murdered and murdered repeatedly over a hundred of times because um, the day repeats itself so that's that's not great I wouldn't want to be her <laughs> but we are following um, Aiden Bishop uh, who fails to save her and then has to live through which what I think I've heard people say that he lives through um, the day as himself consciously, but through a different guest's body. I'm not entirely sure I'm making this up, but it's almost like he is stuck in a, um, like a mansion type of situation and he wakes up as a different guest. Might be making that part up, but it sounds really interesting because I really like those kind of, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Next up we have The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stieg Larsson. This is another one that is made into an adaptation and I think two versions. In the previous comments I remember people mentioning there is the original 
I want to say Swedish <laughs> um, version and then there's also an English one. Um, there's a lot of debate in the comments <laughs> of which one's better, so if you feel like fighting, hey. <laughs> but no, this is a story about um, another disappearance, I think, and this one takes like... Uh, yeah, Harry disappears all over 40 years ago from the events that take place in this book and her uncle finally hires a journalist and this protege punk girl with the tattoos to find out what happens again this seems like seems like a chonker but i have heard so many great things about this and i'm really excited to get to it um this one is still rating 4.14 which is amazing and yeah those two characters together like tap into the whole history and try to dig up as to what happened to harriet 40 years ago uh maybe finding her i don't know i have not seen the movie or read the book yet so something to very much look forward to then we have an Another one that was mentioned so many times and that was Home Before Dark. This one has a 4.20 average star rating and it is written by Riley Sager? Sager? Sager. I don't know. <laughs> but it is following Maggie Holt who has grown up in this famous spooky haunted house. However, she doesn't remember much of it because she was living there as she was a kid and then she grew up and then she you know, moved out uh, way before that, but she gets always asked about the spooky house, which her father wrote like a non-fiction spooky house book about. Um, not fiction. <laughs> She's very skeptical of the story, she doesn't believe anything of it, and she um, lives her life redecorating or reno renovating houses conveniently <laughs> because she does inherit said house and has to move back to the said spooky house and um her the, the 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 city or the town doesn't take well to that because um they gained like unwanted attraction for the tourists but she just wants to like renovate it a little bit do some work and then get out and sell it and you know just move on with her life however as she moves in there, of course, the spooky stuff starts happening to her and uh, it's kind of in accordance to the book that her father released and little by little she starts being like, oh, okay, maybe maybe there was some merit to it, which is, you know, fun. So it seems like a spooky house situation if you're into, if you're in the market for that, this could be a good shout. Now, I feel like I just end up mentioning this book a lot recently, but the next one that was mentioned a couple of times was A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Now, this is a story about Pip, who is, I think, senior in high school, and they have to, or college, I don't know, they have to select a project. So she actually wants to look into the murder of, of a girl that used to go to the school um, and I think she's a little bit personally attached because she used to know the person that got blamed for it. Um, she didn't know him very much but she knew him enough to see that it was a little bit suspicious that he got blamed for that and especially because she um, thought that it might have something to do with um, just racial profiling and I really enjoyed that part of the story and she basically she basically violates literally every ethics point <laughs> where you have to stick with a project so I don't know how she passed that class actually I don't know if she did I'm not sure <laughs> but anyway she she breaks every rule and she gets into a lot of trouble and she actually ends up working with the brother of the convicted person and the convicted person actually I don't want to spoil it so I don't want to use any particular words but he's not with them anymore they're also looking into that because it all it all just seems fishy it all seems like there's some corruption going on somewhere and she wants to discover what happens I love this book <laughs> I flew through it it's definitely not something I keep thinking about it but I really really enjoyed it it was such a good paced book like the characters um, I wasn't there for the characters I was there for the plot and I was there for the uh tiny spookiness but not it's not a scary book whatsoever but it is intriguing for me it was so intriguing I thoroughly enjoyed it um yeah would highly recommend <laughs> And the average is 4.33. Still, it's amazing. Next we got If We Were Villains, and this is a book written by M.L. Ryo with an average of 4.10. This is the one that I keep hearing people referring to as something that's extremely similar to the Secret History by Donna Tartt. Since I have not read either of these, I can't really like um, confirm or deny, but um, it seems from the reviews on this one that it definitely is similar and especially the fact that I think it was mentioned in the acknowledgements so you know 
it. Maybe we should also just put it as a secret history recommendation as well, because that one also always um, intrigued me. The cover though, can we talk about the cover so pretty? Anyway, <laughs> the synopsis was a little bit confusing to me because at first it says, oh, it, like a person is charged for a murder and he um, is in prison for 10 years. And after 10 years, he gets released out of the prison and he's met by the detective that was on the case and sent him to prison. But now the detective is retiring and he wants to, before he retires, he wants to um, ask him exactly what happened, uh, which first of all is a bit ballsy. <laughs> like shouldn't you already be sure if you convicted someone and then it, the synopsis goes straight to oh there are seven people learning Shakespeare and the play turns a bit sinister and into reality almost and one of them gets killed and then they have the biggest acting role of their lives convincing the others and themselves that they're blameless and um, first of all how dramatic I kind of love that <laughs> and second of all I'm not sure if that's like uh, them then telling us what happened or is this like a different case? I, I'm, I'm assuming that it is the same person telling what happened 10 years ago, but it wasn't super clear from this analysis, but that's my assumption, could be wrong. It has a 4.10 average, so again, super high. Then we have a book from an author that I think a lot of people have heard of because of Gone Girl, and that's Gillian Flynn with Dark Places. Um, So Dark Places, the average 3.93, but I, I thought that the premise sounded pretty interesting because I like, I guess, selfishness, but also pragmatism of the main character. <laughs> like, she doesn't seem likable, but at the same time, like, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> so she, um, she actually loses her family, uh, or majority of her family, in this, like, gift to the Satan type of murder um and after the investigation she i think she was only like seven or something but after the investigation they um arrest her 15 year old brother um now fast forward i think 25 years a secret society that is obsessed with secret societies <laughs> contacts her wanting to know more information wanting to like kind of reopen the case and i'm assuming that she obviously doesn't really want to do that however she thinks like well maybe i can cash in into this so she agrees to look into it a bit more and speak to them but for a price you gotta live i guess but the whole investigation kind of takes her into various places that she's not really been before and she's uncovering new information that as a kid she didn't know in the synopsis it says that she has to at the end it makes her run from the killer so i'm kind of assuming that the killer might not have been the brother uh, the, the book is called dark places so i'm assuming we are going to dark places the next one is called The One and is by John Mars and I thought this was a really interesting one to include because it's actually a sci-fi thriller and those are my favorite kind. <laughs> Looking at you, Mr. Blake Crouch, can you please write more books? I need them. But yeah, this one seems like we're living in, in this utopia where uh, the scientists have finally found out how to test for soulmates <laughs> so they take a simple dna swab and then uh, at some point in their system they might find a perfect genetic match for you um, which obviously at first when they introduced it it seemed to have caused a lot of issues with people who are already like coupled up um, however we are i think like five years or something later and five people get a notification that they are matched. Then it continues with a little bit of a cheesy <laughs> line of like, oh, but happy ever afters are not guaranteed for everyone. And, you know, the strangers keep secrets. Um, I don't know if the strangers are the ones they got matched to or the ones that got the notification or all of them. Um, and despite it being quite cheesy, um, I'm kind of intrigued and I kind of want to read this. Let me know if you have and if you liked it. And then the last one I'll mention today is Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. This one actually has a quite a lower... Uh, rating is 3.62, which normally to me on Goodreads is not the best. However, um, I really wanted to include this because this is about a bookseller. So I am still on the very massive search of one that actually is going to deliver because I've not had luck yet. Starless Sea or uh, Sorcery of Thorns, sadness, but we're not gonna dwell on that. <laughs> um, but this is a psychological suspense kind of thriller where, and I really like the premise, where this 
um, booksellers actually targeted by FBI, well targeted maybe is not the right word, but he's a main suspect in a case because a few years ago he made a list of like, what was it, eight? Eight perfect murders. So murders and literature that he thought were like the, the best. <laughs> they, they were the best um, made, the best written about, the, the most creative. I don't quite know what the criteria was, but um, he made that list and some clever, <laughs> some clever little cheeky murderer went ahead and did those murders and he's using his list so obviously FBI found it and then they are suspecting that it's him but obviously in order to defend himself he goes into the search of who actually is it that he's that is doing these murders. <laughs> doing these murders? Yeah, <laughs> let's go with that. In the midst of that he kind of gets a little bit paranoid I think um, and starts seeing everyone as suspects but it actually sounds really good, so I'm not quite sure. I didn't actually look into the reviews yet, so I'm not quite, right, um, not quite sure why the rating is quite low. But I don't know, it sounds kind of fun. And that actually concludes our thriller recommendations. So thank you guys so much for recommending these on Instagram. A challenge to you watching as well, if you could write down your absolute favorite, only one. You're only allowed one recommendation that you would like to recommend. Um, if you could recommend one thriller, preferably like autumnal thriller, whatever that means. <laughs> if you could recommend that in the comments down below or just have a chat with people in general. I just want us to all talk, you know. Um, I think it could be really fun. Just before we wrap up, I would love to thank the new patrons who have joined during the month of September and that October is the first month of officially being a Mooney. Thank you guys so, so much for joining. So I would love to welcome Rox, Lily and Amy into the G's Army tier. Thank you guys so much for your support it honestly means the world and I love 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 the Patreon community that we have created because it honestly feels like family and thank you for being part of it. All right so thank you guys so much for watching stay awesome stay kind and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!